Everybody wants to get united. Like, what we got to do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. <clears throat> Oh my god, that's a way to start off a video. Now in today's video, I want to give you guys two major lessons that you should be practicing for your throw-ups. And I want to give you a little bit of like a tip for the letter E that I found to be super useful. There's two major fundamentals that new graffiti artists should really focus on. Two really important things that are going to help your throw-ups a lot. Now as a new graffiti artist practicing throw-ups, one of the most important things you can study is line work. And the reason for this is pretty straightforward. We have to outline our letters, and because we have to outline our letters, the sloppier our lines, the sloppier our letters look and the better our lines the better our letters are gonna look now keep in mind when we're talking about this topic we are speaking about doing your throw-ups in the books with your typical mediums like pencil pen markers the reason this is important is because well in art in any art form you have your typical mediums stuff that every beginner artist has access to and has a low bar to entry so most people use it versus your specialty mediums which require that you actually have to specialize in that medium in order to progress in that medium there's usually techniques associated with that medium as well that are specific to the medium but this isn't always the case now your specialty mediums would be stuff like oil paint watercolor spray paint right something along those lines and normally when you get into these mediums certain fundamentals that you definitely understand and know take a little bit of a decline and the reason isn't because you don't know those fundamentals it's because the mediums are still new to you and you don't know how to use those mediums in order to represent those fundamentals so you can have an experienced level we'll just say comic book artist because they are masters of line work you can have a master level comic book artist use spray paint for the first time and their lines will be kind of choppy and the reason is because they're not used to the medium that's not to say that they don't understand line work as you can see here duel has a pretty good understanding of line work and as a result his letters look pretty great but if he had really choppy lines let's just go ahead and say like it was something along the lines like that well now it doesn't look as good now i know a lot of new graffiti artists and a lot of intermediate graffiti artists are going to hear me say this and they're going to think they're above studying lines but let's make one thing clear master level comic book artists master level tattoo artists master level fine artists still study all of the fundamentals on an extremely frequent if not daily basis that's how they became masters in their respective fields so even if you're an advanced graffiti artist study lines trust me you can definitely make improvements now while dual throw up is a perfect example of what a textbook throw up looks like this next one shows us a textbook example of flow even though the throw up itself doesn't look like your ordinary throw up now flow is something I talk extensively about here on the channel for that reason I don't want to spend too much time on this but I do want to point out something about how he's able to flow so such a strange M. As you can see, the M looks very different than all the other letters, as you have, you know, kind of just this part of the M being the most prominent, and then you have the right leg of the M over here, which isn't even connected to the other side there. And the reason this works is just by the amount of flow that he has everywhere else. Now, he's already established in his throw up that he has the tops of his letters more along the lines of this, right? We see this repeated with the I, we see this repeated with the top of the M, and while it's not exactly 100% over here, he at least gets the rounded portion on the top on the E. He also takes the time to establish that he has this little bit of a slope to his letters as well right the slope into the rounded bit and he's got that twice on the M which really helps out now the E doesn't have that slope but it does certainly have a nice rounded edge over there which works pretty nicely on top of all that he does still have a very established left side a very established center and while it is less established it still is very noticeable that he has the right side as well so the structure is still there the structure is still taken care of the structure isn't so distorted to where you can't make the letter out at all whatsoever and that that's very important because the style that he did add makes it different, makes it unique compared to all the other letters, but the letter is still present. He then goes ahead and like previously mentioned, he makes sure to go ahead and add multiple areas of flow to the M and as a result, the M still functions in a way that's not crazy offensive. Is there any better word than that? Offensive to the rest of the name. I'm sorry, lack of a better term. And I thought this was something nice to go ahead and point out. It shows you that you can still add a little bit of style so long as you're not destroying the letter you're adding the style. Too. Oh, actually, you know what? This is a perfect example of that little tip that I have for the letter E that I wanted to share with you guys. So the letter E, let's just go ahead and say, for example, that the M came out a little bit more over here. All right, so here's our E. This works perfectly fine, but I found that a lot of people would have an E like this, and they would come to me and be like, I don't know how to add more structure to my E. I don't know what I can do to kind of develop its letter structure just a little bit more. And the answer is really simple. All you have to do for a letter E like this is just put a little line right there. Now, the reason for this is because when we have these what we're gonna call in 
in lines, that being a line that goes into the letter for your throw up, what you're really doing is you're separating your basic boxes. So for, for this letter E in basic print font form, it would be a little something like this. So all we've done by adding this line here is we've established this box being separate from this box as opposed to them being one. A really easy to visualize example of this is right here on the R. You have this inline that comes in and as a result, it separates this box from this box as opposed to them just being one here huge kind of glob. Well, that looks very suggestive. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and control Z that before YouTube demonetizes the video. And we're gonna move on over to the next uh, to the next throw up. Now check this throw up out. I loved this throw up. Dude, you can't even tell me this isn't sick. Look at the uniformity on this. Alright, once again, I talk about flow and throw ups quite a bit here on the channel. There's a lot of videos that I have regarding that topic if you want to go ahead and delve into those. But you can't tell me that this isn't nice and clean. Look at this look at how consistent this is in pretty much every single letter it's not on the K and it's not on the O understandably because it's letter O so that's fine but what does he do he goes ahead and finds other ways to flow so we have similar top but more so the rounded bottom the rounded bottom rounded bottom so on so forth and again and it even obviously happens on the exclamation point which is easy enough to see while once again adding style to just pretty much one letter and then he has to balance this out because the S is a lot heavier than all the other letters at this point so he gives a massive O. Oh, love it. Love it. Th this this is probably one of my favorite throw-ups. I adore this throw-up. And it's going to lead me to the second thing that new graffiti art should really be practicing and studying for when it comes to throw-ups. And that's going to be the elements of art shaped. Now, I know, I know, I've literally had people tell me this, what I'm about to say to you, but some of you guys are going to go ahead and feel like, oh, John, I know how to draw shapes. It's a circle. I can do that. No, you can't. All right, I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to say it. There's a reason why master level artists of all kinds and practices like, once again, comics, concept art, fine art, tattoos, like it doesn't matter. Master level artists still practice how to draw basic shapes. Why? Because shapes are how you create your drawing. The, especially for something like throw-ups where you're using just basic rounded shapes in most cases, the cleaner your shapes are, the cleaner your letters are going to be. If you have sloppy shapes, then you're going to notice it in your letters. And keep in mind, once again, we're talking about using pencil pen markers, your basic tools. And the reason I want to focus on that. The reason I want to focus on those tools and not the specialty tools is because if you can do it for the basic entry-level tools that are common to everybody and people progress with the most, then you'll be able to do it with the specialty tools in no time at all with a little bit of practice. Sure, you'll mess up a little bit in the beginning. Sure, it'll take a little bit of time, especially depending on the medium that you're getting into. But if you understand the formula, if you understand the fundamental with your basic tools, then the transition into the specialty tools will be that much easier. And for graffiti, an art form where using spray paint is such a different playing field than using Using your basic tools, this is important to learn, and it's going to ensure that your transition from the books to the walls is that much smoother. But dudes, that pretty much wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed it, let me know what you thought in the comments down below and give it a massive like. It helps the channel a bunch. And if you're watching this video, I assume you want to learn graffiti, so check out the best how to do graffiti tutorials right here in this playlist, and more graffiti content down here. Also, little side note, I'm still preparing the classes. We're currently setting things up. It looks like the classes are going to be taking place on my website. We're looking to launch the classes April 14th. But that pretty much wraps it up. I'll go ahead and catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.